check this out. I assure you that there's nobody there literally walking on the freeway. This is hilarious. Hey guys, hi, how are you? In this video, we're gonna talk about my recent trip to Las Vegas in my Tesla Model Y. The temperatures were near 100 degrees and no, this is not gonna be about a Titanic trip across the United States. This is gonna be just a mundane 700 mile run trip. But why should you watch this video? Because I think that the likelihood of you engaging on a similar road trip is uh, more likely than you driving an EV across the United States. So that's exactly what I plan to do next month is to drive or Model Y from California to Florida. In this video, I will talk about range, charging times, driving in the heat and under the California sun, and the amazing full self-driving, which is a true lifesaver. But let me give you the choices I had for my trip. The first choice was to fly. A round trip ticket from San Diego to Las Vegas was $85 and the flight time is only about a, uh, an hour and 15 minutes, but it takes about four hours to go to, from door to door. The second choice was to drive my old car, but gas prices being so expensive, it will take me about $150 to drive there. It's less comfortable and it's an old car so it could just break down in the middle of the desert and it's very hot right now to run that risk. The driving time will be less because refueling the car is obviously takes less than charging or EV. The third choice was to drive our Tesla Model Y. The pros is FSD, comfortable sitting, optimal ergonomics. The cost of recharge is zero because I still have free supercharging miles. And the only con is charging times. I went with choice number three because I love driving and I also wanted to get a taste of what I will be facing next month when I embark on my trip to Florida. My wife decided to abandon me for that trip and uh, she's gonna fly out there and we're gonna meet there. Uh, she's a smart woman, what can I say? Before I left home, I put the trip on Google Maps and it said it was gonna take me five hours and 55 minutes to get there. Anyone cares to guess how long it took me? Please pause the video right now and let me know what you think it will take me to get there in my EV. Vegas is 323 miles from me. The EPA range of our Model Y is 303 miles, allegedly, on paper. On a full charge, it should take me there, maybe with a short stop somewhere along the way. Well, it didn't. In this video, I will bring you the reality of driving an EV interstate. Let's go with what Tesla does right. When you punch in a destination on the navigation system, the trip planner will project where you need to stop to recharge to safely make it to your destination. And navigate to Vidara, Las Vegas. The integration is seamless, the stops are mapped out for you, and all you have to do is trust the system. But can you really trust the system? Well, it has been established that the EPA rating of the Model Y is very optimistic to say the least. I have estimated that it is about 15% less than rated. Also, keep in mind that electric vehicles are affected by extreme weather, hot or cold, and everything in the car is electronically controlled, so on hot days, like the days that I drove to and from Vegas, they were in the middle of the hot, near 100 degree weather of California and Vegas. And I was stuck in bumper to bumper traffic, especially on the way there, so the range was affected. How much was it affected? I don't really know, to be honest with you. I just know that I had to deviate from what the trip planner has suggested. The first stop I made was at a supercharger in San Bernardino, California, and only 103 miles away from home. Right now, I'm in the middle of something called Inland, center i think this is san Bernardino, california and i've been driving for three hours you know traffic is really bad and i still have another according to this i, ha I have another stop in about two and a half hours which is called prim nevada and i need to charge there for 15 minutes in order to be able to get to my hotel with five percent i got there with a 40% of battery, so it consumed 40% of energy in 103 miles. So according to my calculations, the range of the battery in those conditions was shy of 260 miles, nowhere near the 300 miles. And I've said it before, 15% less than the EPA estimates, which has been more or less my experience throughout my ownership. Again, I was stuck in traffic and I was in hot, weather and I wasn't driving faster than 75 miles per hour. So even though the planner stated that I could make it to a supercharger in a place called Hesperia with 13% battery, shortly after the navigation told me 
that I needed to stay below 80 miles per hour if I wanted to make it there safely. Uh, so I decided to stop in San Bernardino and recharge, not to 80%, but 100%, which took me 50 minutes. If I leave with 89% right now, then I'll make it to Prim, Nevada with 6% battery. And I only need to stop there for 15 minutes in order to get to my hotel with 26% charge. But I'm afraid that this is not real. I'm afraid that I'm gonna be cutting it super close. So what I'm gonna do is I need to charge this thing for a little bit longer. So let me work on the range here because I have to do 100%. I have to. Speaking of charging, in an ideal scenario, you can charge the Model Y from 20% to 80% in a little over 20 minutes. The other 20% takes just as long, so I've learned not to waste my time and charge it just 80% and that's it. The problem with this way of charging is that in real life, that will give you about 182 miles minus the 50% that we talked about, gives you about 155 miles of range before you have to stop again. It gets a little bit more complicated than that because it's not like the Tesla supercharging stations are everywhere along the freeway. That's where the trip planner comes in handy because it arranges these stops for you in the most efficient and convenient way it possibly can. Unfortunately, it doesn't account for the range discrepancy and you're left wondering if you're gonna make it to your next stop. So what in a regular car is a trip from A to B becomes a trip with multiple end goals. I remember that at some point the Model Y said that I will make it to Vegas with 5% of battery left, but how could I trust that knowing what I know about the shorter than advertised range? So throughout the trip, I caught myself just looking with the corner of my eye, just looking at the charge icon to see if I was gonna make it there. I wasn't really going for time and I was stuck in traffic for a longer portion of my trip due to the fact that it was a Friday afternoon and traffic is brutal along the 215 interstate generally, especially on Friday afternoons. When the trip kept getting longer, I just lost all hope of getting there within normal time. So I just decided to enjoy the ride. I made a second stop in Hesperia, California for peace of mind and just to get some food as I had been on the road for four and a half hours only to drive 138 miles. Also, it's worth noting that a lot of these charging stations are not that close to the freeway as is the case with gas stations. So you need to keep that in mind. Don't be too quick to estimate your stop around the charging times alone. It's about the time you lose just getting off the freeway, finding the stations, and then finding your way back to the freeway. And obviously if it's a road trip, you're not that familiar with those areas. Again, unlike finding a gas station that are usually typically along the freeway. So to make a long story longer, I left San Diego at 2.25 p.m. and Google estimated that I would get to my hotel by 8.14. The route planner in the car said that I had an estimated time of arrival of 8.58 p.m. and I made it to my destination at 10.20 p.m. Almost eight hours. I had 20% left of battery by the time I parked. And remember, things like Sentry and stuff like that shut down where your battery gets below 20%, so keep that in mind when you plan to park at an unknown, unsecure parking spot. I did not move the Model Y while I was in Vegas. Um, I'm not gonna bore you with the full breakdown of the way back, but I'd like to mention a few things that I think they're important for you to know. For example, the trip planner. I think that the trip planner is an amazing tool that I believe to be a huge plus for Tesla vehicles because it integrates charging stops needed for, uh, for you to complete your route along with charging times, etc. The major drawback I see with that is that as I see it is, I leave Vegas at checkout time, 11-ish or something. I charge in Vegas to 80% in 28 minutes near the strip. And then I stop at the grocery store, got Pollo Loco, and then got on the road. Navigate home. The navigation did a great job of taking me on an alternate route that avoided all of the traffic leaving Vegas, but it was a long detour. Eventually, it brought me back to the main road, but it made me stop at Baker, California to recharge. And I say, but, because the Baker Supercharger is the biggest station I have ever seen, but it was overcrowded. My guess is that all of us were living in Las Vegas were suggested to stop at Baker, California to recharge. So I had to wait 25 minutes for a spot. It took me an hour and three minutes from the moment I got in line to wait for a charging port to when I left the station. About the rest of my trip, I just wanna say that I made a second stop in Hesperia, California, because even though the trip planner has sent me somewhere else, I wanted to stop at this one because by then I was already familiar with it and I had seen some restaurants that I liked when I was there on my way there. So I went to get some Japanese food and I ate it in the car. And I'm not gonna confirm nor deny whether I ate that food with chopsticks while FSD did the work, but I do wanna talk about FSD. I have said in the past that I don't believe FSD to be 
real autonomous driving. However, I also have said that it's an amazing feature. I do believe that when used responsibly, it can literally take you places safer than a car without it. It does an amazing job at keeping you in the very center of the lane at all times. It brakes and accelerates smoothly with traffic, and it does lane changes for you without you having to resume. But it's not perfect. A couple of times I tried to use the automatic lane change feature, but the car doesn't do a great job at detecting when a car is speeding on the next lane. So the Model Y just goes for it and I can see how that can be a recipe to get rear-ended. So although the car said that it was okay for me to change lanes, I had to swerve back to my lane and then wait for the speeding car to pass by. In summary, this 700 mile run trip taught me a few things. Uh, one of them is that as much as we love our Model Y, electric cars don't offer the practicality of gas engine cars yet. Road trips, they're doable, yes, but do keep in mind that it will take you a lot more to get there, especially the longer the trip gets. In this case, it took me about 25% longer than if I had driven my gas car. Americans love automobiles and we also love road trips and EVs are not yet at the level of being a practical alternative to gas engine cars. I still plan to do that trip to Florida in our Model Y and we'll see how it goes when the time comes. Google says that I can get there in about 30 hours and if this past weekend is any indicator was coming for me, I should get there in about 40 hours driving time. We'll see. I'm thankful for how comfortable the seats are, the in-cabin entertainment, the visibility, the sitting position, and of course, FSD. Because without those things, these eight hour plus drives would have been unbearable. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.